All righty, here we are. This is my Q&A webinar. Now I know that a lot of people have registered for this, but not everybody can make it live. So the recording will go out in email and people will probably come and go as we go, but that's all right. So tonight I wanted to do a general Q&A and I wanted to give everyone an opportunity to ask me anything. <laughs> anything like anything about my personal life my business my midwifery career um what it's like as a female entrepreneur what it's like as a spiritual entrepreneur what it's like as a sexual woman anything and the reason i wanted to do this was because i really truly believe and value vulnerable leadership and nothing should be off bounds nothing should be taboo nothing should be hidden and i i have a lot of information up here <laughs> I have years and years of education and information and experience in my brain and I want to give it to everybody and I think that women one of the most important things is that women need access to education and information on their bodies on their sexual abilities on their insecurities all of that stuff and that's why I wanted to create this to just give everyone an opportunity to ask something they may not otherwise be comfortable to ask or just are curious so i created this event so i have had people messaging me and emailing me with some questions so i do have a list of questions here some of them are interesting <laughs> um and some of them are really fucking amazing questions so if you have questions feel free to pop them in the chat box if you want to unmute yourself and ask it out loud absolutely feel free so before I jump into the questions that I have in my list, does anybody that's here have a burning question that they want to jump in and kickstart us off with at all? You can type it in if you want, or if you're brave and you want to unmute yourself, feel free. So if, you, if you've got one, jump in. If not, I can go to my list. Or if you want to warm up and, and wait and see how we go and then you can ask later, that's totally okay as well. <laughs> All right, so now these are questions that come from me from a variation of audiences. Some of them from my Facebook group, some of them are from my mailing list, some of them are from my Instagram audience. So some of them are from people who, some of them men and women, um, some who follow my work and some have absolutely no clue what I do judging by their questions. <laughs> And I haven't filtered these out. Like, I just, what do you got? I've got on the list. So the very first question, which is from a man on Instagram, and clearly he really doesn't know much about what I do because the very first question is, I like to lick pussy. Can you tell me how to give a tongue massage? In short, my answer is no. That's not my job. That's not what I'm about. That's not what I'm experienced in. That's not what I teach. So no. I cannot teach you how to do that. I can, however, teach you how to give a yoni massage, but tongue massage, not so much. <laughs> um, another question I have is, what has been the most meaningful part of your spiritual journey? And I love this question. This is a really good question because I came into this work through leaning into my spirituality, through leaning into who I was or what my spirituality was. It was um, a big part of what got through me, got me through a really difficult, difficult time. And um, so that sort of led me to the path of yoni massage and the work that I now do. So if I had to narrow it down, if I had to pick one moment one thing that's been the most meaningful for me would, would be when I experienced my very first yoni massage as part of my practitioner training. Um, I had never had one prior to doing my training and the very first day I got to receive and experience one. And in that massage, I just, I, I experienced the most fucking profound, incredible things and, you know, deep, implosive orgasms is energy that goes into your body rather than explodes out like a clitoral orgasm creates for us and what that what i what i found what i felt in that moment was literally the power of my uterus like the power of my womb the power of that space within me and what i realized in that moment was that that is the holy grail like the actual physical holy grail that the Bible references that 
people talk about that this, this mysterious holy grail cup that's out there somewhere is in women. It is our womb. It, that is our sexual power. That is who we are. And that kind of led me on this mission to explore more about what is the Holy Grail and books that I've, it led me down the path of Mary Magdalene. And it, it was confirmed. It was like, yes, that's actually what the Holy Grail is. That's where it is. And that's why women and their sacred power and their sexual power is so fucking important. That's why the world is waking up through the divine feminine, because it's all right here in these bodies. So that for me was probably one of the biggest profound, meaningful moments in my um, spiritual awakening. So I love that question. That was really good. So if you're here and you have questions, feel free to pop them into the chat box. Um, how do I, this is a really good question too, actually. How do I know where to start with self de-armoring and what do I use? So de-armoring. De-armoring is a technique that can be used in your new massage or on yourself. And de-armoring is basically deep tissue massage for the vagina. So de-armoring, when you think about armor, when you put armor around something, you protect it with a hard covering. So de-armoring is taking off that armor to expose what's underneath, to expose the vulnerability of, of what's there underneath. So de-armoring in terms of vaginal tissue, you know, massage and... Um, in, in self de-armoring is when you go in with the intention to de-armor the tissue. So the, the muscles in the vaginal um, ligaments and the whole area of the vulva and yoni are like muscles everywhere else in our body. We get knots, yeah? You get knots in your back, in your shoulders. The vaginal ligaments and muscles are no different. They get knots in them as well. The reason we get knots down there is often because of um, trauma emotions, stored emotions, fear, we push them all down and they get suppressed in the vaginal tissue. So when you go in and touch them, they can be quite painful or they can be just completely numb and switched off. And so when you're having sex or, or self-pleasure or any kind of um, penetration, it can be quite painful. Now, sex shouldn't be painful. It just shouldn't ever. And if it is, something's not right. Something's not being done right or there needs, something needs to change. So de-armoring is a process where you can start to address that. You can start to heal trauma. You can start to bring tissue back um, to life with blood circulation. So like I said, it's, it's basically deep tissue massage for the vagina. And so that requires um, quite intense, deep work. So to do that on yourself, firstly, you need to be able to reach. Now, the vaginal canal is quite deep and it depends on your body, your ability, your flexibility and how you move. Like I'm a bigger woman, so I have a belly, which means that to reach right high up into my vaginal canal is not the easiest thing to do. Like I can only reach my cervix if I'm squatting and use my longest finger to reach right up there and then I can just touch her. So in order to de myself, I need something. I need a tool. Now my favorite tools, oh, I was going to get it to show you, but I forgot, is um, either crystal wands or dildos, or you can use vegetables. Carrots are really fucking great. Zucchinis, cucumbers, long, thin, things like that. If I mean, something hard would be better, like a crystal wand or a glass dildo because it, it gives less resistance. And when you're de-armoring, you need to be able to really get into that knot and massage it yourself. So to answer the question, just to, to do self de-armoring on yourself, first thing I would say that you need to do is go in with your fingers, have a feel around, explore the anatomy, explore the tissue, see where the lumps and bumps and sore spots are. Then once you've been able to identify by a place that's particularly maybe painful or just sore or it's just intuitively calling your attention just go in and start massaging it with your finger if you can reach if you can't go and grab a carrot a dildo something and go in there with that and then just very gently start moving it around and massaging that area and only go to what you can handle if it's painful stop but knowing that there's that level of pain that you've got to push through to actually make 
the um, the impact on the tissue that you need to, but it shouldn't be excruciatingly horrible and traumatic. You don't want to be doing that to yourself. So um, I would say that's probably the best place to start with just exploring it and finding all the areas and, and seeing if anything in particular is sore and calling your attention. The other alternative, of course, is going to a practitioner or somebody who does de-armoring professionally, like a yoni massage practitioner, and they can also talk you through that process and do it with you or for you. Um, and you know, de-armoring it's it's quite it can be quite intense because it then can ignite an emotional release, a physical response within your body as to what you're releasing. So it can be quite a powerful um, tool to use for yourself. Another question I have is, can I restore sensation in my scar tissue from episiotomy? Um, this is a really good question. And it's one that I get from a lot of women actually, because we have all kinds of scars around our vaginal tissue. Episiotomies, tears that have been sutured from birth. Um, when you have biopsies on your cervix and they take um, chunks out of your cervix and it forms scar tissue. So can you restore sensation? Yes and no. Scar tissue is hardened tissue. It's not elastic like the rest of the tissue in our vaginal anatomy. And what that means is that when our tissue isn't scarred, so it's whole healthy tissue, it expands and contracts. It's erectile tissue, it fills with blood, and it swells when you're aroused. This increases sensation and um, oxygenation and all of that goodness that creates sensation in a woman when she's aroused. and feeling pleasure. When there's scar tissue, it loses its inability to expand. It's quite rigid and it really can be quite um, firm or even hard in some cases. So it, depending on the extent of the scarring and the extent of the damage, and of course how old or fresh it is, it can be restored with some sensation, but there's a good chance that it will never have the full sensation that it did before, just because scar tissue is a complete different molecular makeup to normal vaginal tissue. The way you do that is through massage, is through getting in there and massaging the tissue. And if you, if you do it on yourself, you can sit, put your thumbs inside the vagina, and your fingers outside and just kind of massage the perineal area where the episiotomy scar is or the other scarring, maybe it's on your labia and massage it. The reason is because massage brings fresh oxygen to the tissue. And this takes diligence, like this takes showing up every day to make an actual difference to the tissue and to the sensation. And it's going to go through phases of pain, um, numbness, and then eventually bringing that sensation back into it. But fresh blood flow and oxygenation is the best way to regenerate any kind of tissue damage at all. So that would be the way that you would resensitize scars in the vaginal area. Um, alrighty, other questions that I have. Well, this is a good one. They're all good ones. <laughs> What's the difference between being triggered and being activated? So for anyone who has done my 12 week immersion, we focus, there's a module on language and we look at the importance of language and the words that we use and self-responsibility around our language and our words. Now, one of the words that I talk about is um, triggered. It's a word, sorry, I know my, Wi-Fi is not fabulous, that's Bali for you. Um, triggered is one of the words that we use a lot, um, especially as we move into spiritual awakening and we're becoming self-aware and we're starting to look at the things that make us react in our life. And so we start to use the word triggered. Oh, that triggered me. Oh, that, that triggered me. She said this thing and it triggered me. And what that does is it's creating external blame. That triggered me. It's that thing's fault. That was the thing that created this reaction in me. Abdicating responsibility. Yeah. So when something triggers you, it's that thing's fault. She said that. She triggered me. There's no self-responsibility in that. So what I really encourage the women in my 12-week immersion to do is we eliminate the word triggered completely and you replace it with activated. That activated me. You can see the flip, the complete switch on that. It, it fully puts the responsibility on me. And I am saying, wow, that has really 
activated something within me. I'm responsible for my reaction to that. I'm responsible for how that has made me feel. And I'm responsible for what I'm going to do about that. Whereas when something triggers you, it's like, I don't have to do anything about it because it was her fault or his fault or their fault because they made me feel that way. So I don't have to do anything. Whereas activated, it's like, yeah, no, that's all you, baby. <laughs> you need to be doing something about that. So I really encourage you to eliminate the word triggered in any sense of the word, like any, in any way, shape or form, it's abdicating responsibility. Activated is what happens to you when there's something that externally creates a reaction within you. So that's the difference between triggered and activated. So I hope that made sense. There's a comment there. Love that flip. Yeah, me too. It's an awesome one. And I know that the beautiful Alison who is here tonight, um, I loved what she did with that. She worked with young troubled teens and she taught that to them as a, as a step in self-responsibility that, you know, to teach our teenagers and teach our children to start taking responsibility for their, their life and their actions. She didn't trigger you. She activated something within you. Own that shit. And that's where you start to make the difference. So I absolutely love that. Um, all righty. If you remember, if you do have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat box. Um, next question. What's the difference between yoni mapping and yoni massage? So I teach women to be yoni massage practitioners. There is also a modality out there called yoni mapping. We only mapping therapy or whatever you like to call it. So yoni mapping is it's it, it's a it's a technique that I use in my yoni massage. So diamoring is a technique, yoni mapping is a technique, and yoni massage is a technique. And I have brought all three under the umbrella of yoni massage. So yoni mapping. What do you do when you map something? You plot it out, yeah? You, you look at all the components, all of the parts, you map it out and you create a map of that particular thing. And in this case, we are creating a map of the yoni. Now, the yoni, for those who don't know, is the anatomy of the womb. Everything, the uterus, the cervix, the vaginal canal, the labia, the perineum, the clitoris, all of the bits, that is the yoni. So when you're mapping the yoni, you are creating a map for the woman of her anatomy. So, and you do that through touch. So when a woman comes to you and she wants yoni mapping, you then walk her through her anatomy. This is your G spot. This is your A spot. This is your clitoris. This is your cervix. This is how it feels when we stimulate and touch the cervix this way. There's a knot here. This is, and you, it's a full communication process and you're talking the woman through the anatomy of her womb, how it feels when it's touched, if she likes it, if she doesn't. It's great for women who know nothing about their bodies. It's great for women who are lost and have never been able to orgasm maybe. And they're like, what the fuck is what down there? How does it work? Teach me, show me. So it's a really good tool to then um, help women to get to know their bodies. It's, a, it's really vital. We live in a world where we don't have sex education. We fucking don't. There are very few schools out there that actually teach children sex ed rather than this is your period, you might get it at this age, you're gonna bleed, you might get pregnant. <laughs> That's about the capacity. Don't talk about it because then they won't do it, right? That's the theory that we've all adopted. Well, fucking wake up call, no, it doesn't work like that. Our children are out there fumbling in the dark, getting pregnant because no one will fucking talk to them about how it all works. Not only getting pregnant, but getting STDs, not feeling pleasure, giving away their bodies for no reason because they think that's the right thing to do, rather than being taught that they are incredible fucking sexual beings who deserve to be worshipped, asked for consent and respected. This is what we need to be teaching our children. And I went on a complete rant there and I've forgotten what the question was. <laughs> Um, mapping, right, yes. So because we live in a society where we're not taught, mapping is a great tool for women to learn about their bodies and actually receive the sex education they never got. 
So yoni mapping, yeah, it's, it's a process of mapping out your anatomy and learning what's where and how it feels when it's touched and also different ways of touching it. So it's a great tool for women to be able to realise, to take back to their partners, to say, this is what I like and this spot here. And when you do this here, that feels really good. Well, that feels really fucking horrible. Don't touch that spot like that. So it's really about educating the woman. That's what yoni mapping is. Now, yoni massage is literally massaging the tissue of the vaginal canal outside inside all of the area so it's bringing the blood flow in it can be a combination of pleasure strokes it can be um, all kinds of things it's a mix of all of that and it's, it's literally massage if you think about when you go for a full body massage it's exactly the same but on the external and internal of your vaginal area as well so what I, as I said before, I've combined all of those together under the umbrella of yoni massage. And that's what you can expect if and when you're having a yoni massage with me or my glorious practitioners, of which Alison, who is here tonight, is one. She's amazing. <laughs> um, I'm just going to read the comments. I'm extremely activated by this whole talk, so I'm glad I'm here. My shame game is huge. I adore non nonsense you are about and what should be non absolutely absolutely and that's what i that's why i'm doing this that's exactly why i'm doing this so that women can face that those those fears and the stories that we have about this stuff um brie likes my rant brie's a big fan of my rants um totally activated too awesome <laughs> Um, absolutely. And that's, you know, that's something that's a big reason why I do this work is because you cannot be a powerful woman. You cannot be a spiritual leader and be afraid of your vagina. It just doesn't work. It's just not possible. And that's why I'm so fortunate that I work with women who are becoming spiritual leaders and women who want to step up in their spiritual awakening, that they can address this aspect of themselves as well. Um, just wondering how hysterectomies play into this topic. Um, in what way? Like, I, I've got lots to say about hysterectomies. <laughs> lots. Um, so if you, if you want to clarify maybe about what information exactly you want about hysterectomies, because yes, of course, they're extremely fucking relevant to all of this. And I have many, many clients who have come to me because they're either needing a hysterectomy, they've been told they need a hysterectomy, or they've had a hysterectomy and um, need help negotiating that process. So if you want to put in a little bit more information, I'll come back to that one. Um, would you recommend Yoni Massage for someone who wants to awake in their body? Absolutely. Absolutely, fucking lonely. It's, it's, yoni massage is a modality like no other. When a woman is ready to really get vulnerable, like really fucking get vulnerable, there, you can't hide in a yoni massage. And that's what makes it so powerful. It's, it's, and that's why it's so important to have a trusted practitioner because it's a really fucking vulnerable space. You walk in there, you get naked in front of someone who is looking at you and your body and is then going to massage all of that body with your consent and allow you to feel whatever you feel in that space. It allows you to address all of your fears, all of your emotions, all of your shit that you're holding on to about who you are as a woman, how you can and can't perform as a sexual woman, what you how open to pleasure you are or how closed to pleasure you are it allows you a space to explore all of that and as a woman steps into her sexual power she can't help but awaken she it, 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 it's a side effect <laughs> of having that experience and it just it's so powerful for a woman to step up and face herself because all that holds us back is our fear and when you can address that fear, when you can shift that fear and face that fear, you can't help but project yourself into your power as a woman. And you, as I said, you can't be a powerful woman and terrified of your sexuality. You just can't. A woman has to own all of herself to fully step into her power. And we live in a world where women have been told, don't be sexual at any fucking cost. Don't be sexual. It's risky, it's dangerous, it's perverted, it's dirty, it's naughty. Don't do it. 
So of course we're all sitting back going, okay, I'm too terrified to be that. But that's where our fucking power is. And that's why the patriarch was so successful in doing what it's done for the last 5,000 years. Because we were all terrified. And now we're waking up. Now the divine feminine is the way that we are waking up and the world is going to fucking change. So yes, the yoni massage is definitely a big way to wake up in your body and your mind and your spirituality. All right, what other questions have we got there? Um, doo -doo -doo. I have four girls and I just refuse to pass on this shame to my children. I want them to fully be immersed in their yoni. It all starts with me. Absolutely. Like our children learn from us. Our children learn from the world around us. They learn about their bodies from us. They learn how to feel about a female body from the female role models in their life, AKA mum. That is the first place they look to, to learn how to react, respond and feel about their bodies. Do they see you walking around the house naked? Do they see you walking around the house fully clothed at all fucking times, never showing a piece of your nakedness ever? Do they see you looking in the mirror going, oh fuck, look at this belly, oh God, look at this flabby arm. Do they see that? Because that's what they're learning how to react. And, you know, Brie is another beautiful woman who is here tonight who also has girls. And we've had this conversation about when people come to the house, and Brie, I hope you don't mind me saying this, <laughs> when guests and visitors come to the house, she has always told her girls, quick, go and put your undies on, go and put your clothes on, cover up. And it's affirming this pattern that naked is vulnerable. Don't show your bodies to people. It's something to be hidden. And it's, you know, it sounds like common sense and something that you would do, but the way we learn is through the subliminal messaging of how we treat and talk to our children. So rather than having a conversation with them and explaining the situation, we're constantly affirming this privacy, secrecy, naughty nature of who they are that they need to cover up. And Brie has changed that now because she's so fucking amazing. But yeah, this is where it changed. If you have daughters, get out a mirror. Everybody take off their pants and squat over the mirror together. Look at what you've got. Look at mummy's labia. Look at your labia. Oh, they're different. See how they're different colours, they're different shapes, they're different sizes. What's your like? Curiosity. Children explore the world through curiosity, no matter what age. Show them it's normal. Imagine if you could live in a house where it's totally okay and safe for your daughters to come home and go... Mom, I met this guy at school today and it made my pussy tingle. Is that normal? And you can go, yes, telling that is turn on. You're learning what that is. Isn't that amazing? Imagine how empowered she would feel in her body. Teaching her what consent is. Teaching your sons what fucking consent is. How to respect a woman's body. How to touch a woman's body. It's so important to lead the way with our children, boys and girls. There's, there's no difference. You know, we, we teach women, we teach girls about periods and we teach boys about wet dreams. We teach boys about fucking pleasure and sexuality and what to expect, but we don't teach it to girls. Like, what the fuck is that? We teach girls about sanitary products because your body is so fucking filthy, you need to know about it. Like, no. That needs to change and it changes with you, with their mum, with their dad. Have these conversations with your husbands, your partners, whoever you're reproducing with. Have these conversations with them So, because it needs to be a whole environment. Yeah, it doesn't work if there's one parent who's still shutting off and, and won't talk about it. Um, all right. Let's see. How does it go, change? Fuck, where can you sign me up? <laughs> I can sign you up, Lara. No worries. <laughs> um, and that's the beautiful thing is that um, in, in two weeks' time, I will have six qualified practitioners all around Australia um, to make it more accessible for – actually, no, Australia and New Zealand um, will make it more accessible for you to be able to access Yoni Massage in this kind of work. And that's my biggest goal is to let every woman be able to have access to this work because it's so, so, so important. Um, okay, how does it change the relationship to self and sexuality? Okay, hysterectomy we're talking about. It's different for every woman. 
Now, hysterectomies are the number one cure for all gynecological issues because medicine doesn't know how to fix them. Women's reproductive anatomy is a mystery. Okay, there are about two textbooks in the world that accurately give the anatomy of the clitoris. Two, two textbooks in the English language teaching our doctors all over the world that have the correct anatomy for the clitoris. That is how little we know and how little we're fucking accepting the importance of educating our health professionals on our anatomy. So these doctors are then graduating to be gynecologists, obstetricians, cosmetic surgeons, all of this. Midwives. I had the same education as a midwife. I wasn't taught shit about the clitoris or the vaginal anatomy for that matter, like the pleasure anatomy. And, you know, so what happens then? A woman comes in with an issue, a gynecological issue. We don't know how to deal with it. So either you're going to stuff you with hormones or cut it out because that seems to fix the problem. Doesn't but it seems to fix the problem in medical eyes. So it's become the go-to. Now that's not medicine's fault. That's not the doctor's fault. That's just all they know how to do. So what do we expect them to do? So a hysterectomy, if it's done early before menopause, it puts the woman into medically induced menopause, literally overnight. She wakes up having hot flushes, dry vagina, difference in libido, all sorts of things. So that's going to impact her sexuality. Now, when a woman has a hysterectomy, it means that the walls of her vagina are going to thin and they lubricate less. So she's going to be dry and sex is potentially going to be more painful. So, of course, it's going to impact a woman's desire to have sex, her ability to orgasm, her ability to feel turned on. Now, these can be managed and reversed. And just because you have a hysterectomy does not mean that's how it's going to go for you because we are energy first, physical second. We dictate what happens in our bodies with our thoughts, beliefs, and feelings. There is no exception to that. I have worked with clients who have had these issues, whether it be through cancer treatment or through hysterectomies, and they have rectified them. They are back to beautiful, juicy, self-lubricating vaginas and fabulous orgasm, orgasms just like they had before. So it's absolutely possible, but you have to want that and you have to be willing to work for it and do it for yourself every single day and show up to that for yourself. So it changes things, but it's up to you how much it changes things and how much you want to change them again. Um, I hope that answers that question. Um, this was the missing link for me and I'm so grateful for showing up. Absolutely. Um, I've got the naked part down pat. We're always naked. We have been so great with allowing our kids to be naked. We don't carry shame around our bodies and sex. Absolutely. That's so fucking important. So important. Naked, nudity around children is, it's so important. And I, you know, I follow many, many women on social media who are in the same industry as me and do similar work to me. A lot of them have children and you see the, um, I don't know, what do you call them? Keyboard warriors getting on and giving their opinion about, oh, you can't be naked in front of your children. How dare you? Oh, you're a pedophile, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, fuck, really? That's how we're seeing this? That's the norm? Like, that is what needs to be rewritten. Um, cool. All right. Thank you so much. I needed to hear everything you are saying. I have always been in favour of being open to talk about sexuality. However, the community and family I am in have been very shut down and been labelled as a slut in so many instances. This is amazing. You have reignited the light within me. That is good to hear. And I'm, yeah, unfortunately, it's not uncommon. And I hear that a lot. So you're not alone. Um, but it's, yeah, we need to talk about this stuff. And this is why I have a Facebook group where all of the women who have worked with me are able to be. And it's a space where we can talk about this because women don't have that space. It's a space where there's no boundaries, there's no taboos, there's no too much, there's no fucking anything. You come in, you ask what you want, you post what you want, you say what you want, you be who you are in that group. And it's so important that women have a space to be in their sexuality and their sexual power and the process of exploring that because it's just society doesn't give us that so um 
my two oldest kids have never seen their father naked. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, you know, and that's the, the uh, a whole other thing is the opposite sex nakedness. Like, should daughters see their father pro uh, pregnant? <laughs> naked. Should sons see their mother naked? Like, there's so much shit that we put around this. It's, it's, it's meeting those edges, meeting those boundaries of uncomfortability and, and teaching our children because we have to, we have to, we're raising women, you know, everyone bangs on about fucking raising strong women and this woman and blah, blah, blah. Are you teaching them about their bodies? Are you teaching them about sex? Are you teaching them that being a slut is not actually a bad thing? Are you teaching them that having sexual desires is normal and healthy and okay? And are you teaching them how to act on those sexual desires? You know, this is why rape happens because we don't teach our boys how to hold and channel and express their sexual desires. We teach them to suppress it and that it's a bad thing. And you know, the porn industry has a lot to answer for, a lot to answer for. It's good in some ways, it has some purposes, but it also has done a lot of damage to our sexual nature in who we are as men and women and those who don't identify as that. Um, half the people I know don't even use anatomical correctness, for fuck's sake. Absolutely. How much fun? <laughs> Pekka and Pee Pee. I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, you know, and but most of our population doesn't use the correct anatomy. I still catch myself sometimes saying vagina when it's actually the vulva. Okay, the external of our anatomy is the vulva, the internal canal is the vagina, yet we all say vagina, but that's actually completely fucking incorrect. So, it, yeah, there's a lot to rewrite when it comes to language and how we speak about these things. Um, every video starts with a blowjob, totally, and then he never goes down on birth. It's like the recipe for sex is blowjob, penetration. He comes all over her and she squirts all over the place. Something's wrong with that script. <laughs> Not very accurate. Um, that's a good point. My girls know the correct terms, but we do also use Noonie. Yeah, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with having nicknames. Like, I think it's really beautiful to nickname your parts, especially when it comes from a place of um, a term of endearment, as opposed to that makes me uncomfortable, so I'm not going to say that word. There's a very big difference there. So, you know, I love to call mine pussy. And that's because that's just what she feels like. That's what I like to call her. And it just feels better to me in some settings and situations as opposed to vulva or vagina. So it's finding the words and again, looking at the importance of language and why are you saying that word? Is it out of fear or is it out of love? There's, there's no difference here. And you know, Words are one of the most important things we can reclaim. And again, that's another thing we do in my 12 week immersion is reclamation of words, pussy, cunt, all of these things, reclaiming those words and owning them as opposed to letting them be a derogatory term of the patriarch. Um, all threesome female, <laughs> FFM video, so female, female, male videos, the guy is just fucking two girls, boring. A porn channel designed for women would be a lucrative business. Absolutely, and it's out there. It is out there. There are some really amazing women creating women porn or porn for women or porn for those who identify as female. Um, and there, it's amazing. It's a completely different focus. It's a completely different approach. There's a lot of industries um, now who are starting to do that. And it's, um, it, yeah, because it's needed for that exact reason. And porn is a very poor representation of reality. Absolutely. Um, all right, cool. If you've got questions, keep posting them in, but I'll go back to my list. Where are we at? How long have I been ranting? <laughs> uh, all right, we've got time for a couple more. Um, now, somebody did ask, what's my favorite sex toy? Wow. <laughs> if I have to choose one, <laughs> I'm going to say it would be the Sacred Squirter from Yoni Pleasure Palace. And I did want to show it to you again, but it's over there in my drawer. Um, now, the Sacred Squirter is a tool that is designed, it's glass, and it's a tool that's designed to stimulate the G-spot and the skein's gland in a woman. So it's a toy that is designed 
to help women who want to squirt or women who do squirt to be able to do it on their own without a partner. Or you can do it with your partner, whatever floats your boat. But for me, it's been a tool that just hits the right spot and I love it. And it has really um, helped me hone my squirting capabilities, given me more control over my muscles and how I squirt. And um, because that's something that a lot of women find who are able to squirt, that it becomes uncontrollable. And that becomes a source of uncomfortability or inconvenience sometimes. So being able to really tune into your muscles and use them and control them, it it allows that to just be more of a relaxed thing than a fuck, put down the towels, put down the plastic sheet, we're going to make a mess. So the Sacred Squirt has definitely been my favourite tool in that. And you can get that from Yoni Pleasure Palace, um, which is an amazing Australian Perth-based business, which is all glass and crystal toys for exploration and self-pleasure. Amazing. Absolutely love them. I give them to my practitioners and I recommend them to all of my clients as a place to get their toys from. Um, I follow sex positive families on Instagram, but do you have recommendations for any other resources for helping mothers educate their children? I started to squirt after having children and it's so uncomfortable. I have huge issues with it. So I turn off completely. Yes, absolutely. So fucking common. I hear that a lot. There was two separate questions. Sorry, but I read them together. Um, so First question, Sex Positive Families is a great resource and they've recently published a book um, for children, to educate children, and it's a really, really good book. It covers things in a really good way as well as inclusivity. So they really talk about non-binary, non-labels, um, and it's a really good tool for kids to be educated on. Other things I would say, there's a book by Jane Hardwick Collins and it's called Becoming a Woman. Now that is specifically for girls, females. Um, about the changes in their body and stepping into being a spiritual woman with her menstrual cycle and her period. Um, <clears throat> other resources, helping mothers educate their children. Meet your own shit. I think that is the biggest thing that you can do to help educate your children is to meet your own shit around your sexuality, around your body, around your orgasms around your hesitations to have conversations with kids. I think the biggest thing holding our children back is us, especially when it comes to information, you know, and I, I'm not a mother, I don't have children, but I've experienced my hesitation around having these conversations with my niece and my nephews. Like just that, that moment of, do I say that? Do I open this conversation out of my own uncomfortability? Not even theirs. So I can imagine being a parent and not having addressed any of this stuff within yourself, there'll be massive hesitation there, but you're doing your children the biggest disservice by sitting on your shit and staying in your comfort zone around your sexuality. So I think that would be the best possible place to start is yourself. Start meeting your own fear around sex and sexuality, your, your openness to pleasure, your ability to experience, receive, give all of it. Um, and yeah, squirting totally. Um, it's and I think one of the biggest things is to get to know yourself. Self exploration is so important. So when you say uncomfortable, I would say explore that more. What about it is uncomfortable? Is it painful, or is it just a, a, an intense kind of pleasure that you don't you're not really sure about? So play with that more. Get a sacred squirter. Do it on your own. Get to know your body. Feel what activates that sensation and that squirt mechanism within your body and get to know it more. Feel, is it the, an emotional resistance that makes it uncomfortable? Is it a physical resistance that makes it uncomfortable? Get to know your body and how she functions, how she orgasms. So then you can really start to address these things for yourself. And of course, getting to know yourself, like I said, helps you to, um, to control these things in the way that you desire out of pleasure rather than out of fear. Um, cool. All right. So now I'll answer, can you explore with your partner or is this something you do for yourself? Great question, which is actually very similar to the um, one of the last questions that I have here, which is, um, why do I need a dildo? If I have sex with my husband all the time and we have great regular sex, why would I need a dildo? Which is very similar to what you just asked. Um, sex with somebody is very different to sex with yourself. 
And I remember when I did one of my 12 week immersions, one of the women said, she hates masturbation. It's so boring. It's so disconnected. I have such a good relationship with my husband. That is so much better. That's that, I don't need masturbation. That's all I need. And as she did the course and as she explored herself, she realized that she was actually running from herself. She was running from a deeper love connection with herself. So by constantly going to somebody else, it allowed her to keep that distance. She didn't have to get to know herself. She didn't have to face herself. So that, I think, is one of the biggest difference between owning a dildo and doing this by yourself and doing it with a partner. Now, both have layers of vulnerability, absolutely, and they both are necessary. They both push edges and boundaries and comfort zones that you need to meet. So it's important that you do both. I think you really need to spend time as a woman on your own with your body. Get to know it. If you don't know what your body likes, how your body works, how your anatomy is, how can you expect somebody else to? You have to be the driver of your body and your pleasure. Your partner is not responsible for all of your pleasure. You are responsible for your pleasure. And you have to be the, the maven of that. Now, maven means master. Yeah, to be expert, to be knowledgeable. You have to be the maven of your own body. You have to be the maven of your ability to receive pleasure. What do you like? What's your turn on? What's your turn off? So you can only do that in a space where you feel totally safe and comfortable. And often that means on your own. And you can then take it to your partner. You then explore with your partner. You can lay on the bed, spread your legs and get your partner to look at your vulva. Get him to talk you through it. What do you see? What do you look? What do you, like, what are the colours? What are the textures? What's your favourite bit? What are you curious about? You know, you can explore with your partner because that's another edge. That's another place to meet. So I think both are very, very, very fucking important. And I think if you, uh, you know, and a lot of men, a lot of partners say, you don't need a vibrator, you don't need a dildo, you've got me. It's like, well, no. <laughs> There's actually a purpose to both and both have a really big space for you to discover and hold and explore in. So I think it's really important that every woman takes time on her own to get to know her body. Like it's really, really, really important. There's so much for you to discover about yourself. I mean, I'm 35 and I've been doing this work for three years and I still discover things about myself and my sexuality and my turn-ons, my turn-offs, everything. So I can't imagine women who have never, ever, ever done this work or stepped into it, what they don't know about themselves and their bodies. Like I discovered, you know, only maybe about six months ago that I really love super light, gentle feather touch on my labia. Like that is just incredible. It makes me want to melt. I never knew that because no man had ever done it to me. I had never done it to myself. And then when I slowed down and did a self-pleasure ritual and just massaged my whole body with all different kinds of strokes and touches and sensations, I did it and I was like, whoa, that is next level. And I never knew that about myself. So it's only through doing that I have identified it and I can then tell my partners, I like this, do this to me. And then I get it, funnily enough. <laughs> All right. Thank you, gorgeous women, for all of your questions. Does anybody have any last question before we finish up? No. <laughs> thank you so much. It's been so gorgeous having you all here. And to thank you for everybody who sent in all of their questions. And I hope I've answered them as you wanted them and done them justice. Thank you so much. Love to you all and enjoy your evening wherever you are in the world. Bye.